Hey everybody, it is another week on Watar. Although we're going to be calling this Heavy Things Done Lightly. More on that in a second. Today, what is the world part four? People keep trying to save the world. People keep thinking their first things is trying to save the world. But what is the world? And believe me, we ain't trying to save it. That's today on Watar. This is Greg Gilbertson bringing us in. Bring it in, brother. So today, though, is the last of four. So we always put our interviews in between the episodic narrative called me talking about old and new world stuff. Today, we finish the conversation that we started three episodes ago. What is the world? So let's do this thing. This series of conversations came out of a frustration in ch- in trying to talk to young people, young here being 20s and 30-somethings, who really have been taught what I was taught back in the 80s, that the world is something we should save. And then I started thinking, well, what is the world? Is it a blue marble in the sky, like science sort of tells us growing up? So in episode two, we talked about the scientific understanding. Episode three, we talked about the philosophical understanding. But we started, we started right here. I don't know how to explain this to you. Um, but we we started with <laughs> with Michael Jackson. And so I'm gonna start with Michael Jackson right now on this fourth, on this fourth most excellent. Uh, um, explanation of what is the world. So here it is. Cue it up, Corey. What is the world? We are the world. There it is. We are the children. There's Al Jarreau. He graduated from a school in Wisconsin I went to. But I believe he's also dead. Today... We are saving our own lives because we are the world. That's where it started. There's Stevie Wonder. Oh, Hall and Oates. Guys, if you really listen to that song carefully, uh-oh, we'll stop right there. If you listen to that song carefully, you will be really confused about what the world is. At the end of this episode, you will be less confused. But if you still don't have a degree of confusion, then you are either not listening, very possible, and or a saint in the Eastern Orthodox Christian tradition. But let's begin, shall we? There is a Christian answer to what is the world. It, I believe it's best expressed in the Orthodox Church. And here is the answer to the question as expressed in the East. What is the world? The world is your neighbor. Hmm. So like when you say that, man, this world is a mess. If you're living close to the tomb of the resurrection and you understand deeply the Christic culture, which is Christianity, then when you say the world is a mess, you will not mean like Washington, D.C. You will mean the neighbors you have on any given day, their relationship with you and your relationship with them and all of creation is a mess. All of creation as per your relationship with it at any given moment. If you say the world is a mess, what you mean is your relationships are a mess with your neighbor. And that's that. Yeah. Corey, play the music. Let's get us out. That's it. The world is your neighbor. The world is better when the people around you are properly ordered. And the world is worse when the people around you are improperly ordered. The key to Christian cosmology is realizing that you are one of the improperly ordered neighbors in any given world, meaning in any given moment where you relate to things around you. 
In this way, the world is always two things at once. The world is dynamic and constantly moving and changing according to your thoughts and your desires and according to the thoughts and desires of the people and things you relate to. I think this makes the world nothing like the blue marble that floats in the sky. And actually, that is the blue marble you see at the beginning of the video by Michael Jackson and his buddies, We Are the World. They start with the blue marble. If you go look at that video, we'll link it. But I think that's really misleading and confusing. And it's been misleading and confusing for 100 years. And it's in your blood if you're a modern person. Meaning that concept of the blue marble is deeply set into the synapses, which you call your brain. So Philip Sherrard, one of my 20th century besties. Yeah, not that I knew him or anything in the 90s when he died, because then he would have not liked me. We would not have been friends. But I became his friend through his books. He says this, the world as known to Christians is something like a series of becomings, of deifications. And these becomings, these emergences, they help us understand the why of things. For light people, for modern, scientific, fully committed light people, the world is simply a thing to be studied in space and time. As if space and time were fundamental objective categories. As if space and time were fixed and known by their energies. Oh, I think I'm describing space and time as God. And I think that's how light people think of it. But those things are not fixed. And if you worship them, it makes for a really, really crappy world. Okay. I don't want to go down that road. I digress. For old world Christians, that's what this episode is about. The world is a hierarchy of ontological levels, levels of being that lead up to the highest level, to God. In this way, the world is not a place. The world is a network of purposes. What? The world is a matrix. But It's a matrix and a network of God's purposes, if properly seen. St. Gregory of Nyssa says, the world refers to a moment when God suddenly in one instant created the meaning and foundation for all causes and for all substances. The world is a network of meaning. I told you, you'd still be confused unless, of course, you are a saint. Then you wouldn't be listening to this dumb podcast. All the things that exist, exist because all the things have purpose. To have a purpose is to exist. So if you, if you want to think of it like this, they, like if you like fairy tale language, make up what's a poof? What's a poof sound? Ping, Poof. No, that's like a bullet sound. Poof. That's the sound I want to use. The thing that poofs things into existence is purpose. Telos. They become real when they, it, me, you, has purpose. And we do. Businessmen talk like this all the time, guys. Businessmen talk like this all the time. The market will produce the product. That is in demand. That is necessary. Poof. If people see a purpose in a product, it will be produced. Poof. I want, I want a standing poof sound on this podcast. Corey. Corey is our very young editor. We pay almost no money to do this but he's badass. Corey, poof. All right, now it gets even more crazy. The world has a purpose, and St. Maximus and others tell us that the purpose of the world is to be an arena where all of creation groans and gropes and moves and crawls toward its creator. 
What? So for us humans, the world exists as an arena for our deification. In other words, the world has a purpose and therefore, poof, it exists. And what's the purpose? To be a place where we exercise, exercise literally, where we work toward becoming like God. So in that, in that way, the world is your backyard, poof, and your bathtub. And your buddy and his barbecue pit. But the world, I want to hear this, this is important, is not Korea. You're like, that guy really hates Asians. That guy did an Asian slur, flag it. The world is not Korea unless, of course, you are with a neighbor and together you call yourself in Korea. Then Korea, poof, voila, is the world. Mm. Mm. It's not just Korea. That goes for everything. There's no such thing as Africa until you're actually experiencing people calling themselves Africans and you're face to face with them on some level. Suddenly you are in that world. The earth then, if we can use that phrase, the earth exists because it provides the arena in which we become healed. The arena exists for us and we exist for the arena, for the world. The world is always happening on two planes, the material and the immaterial. In this way, there's no distinct, discrete, well-defined physical world. There's no ball in the space sky. I don't know what to tell you. That's an abstract idea. I, I, Unless you're an astronaut floating in space, you've never actually seen the blue marble world. And even then, if you were that astronaut, that wouldn't be your world, except insofar as you can relate to it as it floats by. Your world would be more like the spaceship. And that would suck. I still don't get why we go to space, by the way. So, the... Wherever you and your neighbor are experiencing a thing, you're experiencing the world. And so the world is suddenly, poof sound, a lake or a tree or a person. Sherard tells us in his book, Human Image, World Image, that the world cannot be truly known by the categories of space and time and energy and so on. But instead, the world can be known as an arena in which to love. <laughs> love. The best is, if you go back and listen to a podcast with some of the people we interview, go back last week. Love is just the biggest wrench in any mathematical equation ever. A plus B plus L. Wait, hold on. What's L? Well, L is love. Oh, man. You just ruined the equation, bro. We had it all figured out. Then you threw in this leftover called love. Now we got remainders. The thing does not add up. Love does not fit well with the light people modern project. Think of it like this. The stuff swirling around you on any given day, the, 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 the moon up there in the sky, the stoplights, the sunroof above you, cramps. That's a thing appendicitis. By the way, did you guys see my hat? That's a Gal Marjo's hat. This is a hat that I'm giving to one of my daughters because we threw a big capy in New York City and the next day my appendix blew up. So I'm honoring my appendix and my daughter by wearing the hat that we created to remember our little time together. If you can see it on video, you'll see that it's pink and black and it's pretty cool and it says Gal Marjo's the plural of Gagi Marjos, which is to you the victory, and we say it at the KP table. That's an aside that is not relevant to what I was just saying. I don't know. It's pink. It's a cool hat. Anyway, in his book, Sherard keeps telling us that the key ingredient in any given equation about what the world is is that the, the world is where we love. And so all these things that float around us are all given to us as a way, as a means by which to deify, to become like God, to become like love. 
So you don't eat a bologna sandwich, guys. You eat a sacrifice that is the pig that gave its life so you might nourish the body in order to nourish the soul. <laughs> you just thought you were having lunch. But that's not what's happening. The world is the arena in which you eat the ham sandwich in pursuit of God. Whoa. With this kind of thing in mind, St. Basil the Great wrote that the world is a unified whole in spite of the variety of its components. He says, it has been bound together, the world, by God into a single interconnected unit and to, into a single harmonious body through which there is an indestructible union of love. The world is where we love. And love is found in the world. St. Maximus, 6th century, he wrote that man is the world. So each of us is the world. Oh no, Michael Jackson was right. It's nuts. St. Maximus is saying, it literally says, we are the entirety of creation in miniature. Just as creation also consists of both physical and spiritual realities, he writes, so do we humans consist of a type of middle creation. We are creatures straddling the division between the material world and the immaterial world. We're both and still between. We live in the liminal because we're both material and spiritual. And in that way, we are the world. We are the children and the grass and the light and the camera stand. We are the ones that make a better day. So you are the world. I know, it's crazy. Maximus goes on to say that, in fact, if we are the world, then the world is us. What? The world is a macanthropos, right, of man. Creation is a, micro, is a macrocosm of us. They mirror each other. It is, in fact, this fractal idea that when you see that, you see it again and again, repeated everywhere. The world is a human distended into eternity. Whoa. Maximus will finish up with this. He says the whole world, quote, made up of visible and invisible things is man. Intelligible things display, teach us the meaning of the soul, and the soul displays and teaches us the meaning of intelligible things. The world is a person, and the person is the world. Corey, let it rip. Bob Dylan, get it. There's a chance to make it. We're saving our own lives. I wonder if that was when he was pledged to the devil. But... These people, they got it right. Let it let it play, Corey. Look at him. What is happening? 1984, they got it right? God's power is pretty good. There's Paul Simon. Tina Turner got it right. Wait a minute. Who's that? Is that Dan Aykroyd? Wait a minute. Ghostbuster is singing this song? What? He got it. Dan Aykroyd, do you think Dan Aykroyd knew that he was talking about St. Maximus when he was singing this song? First of all, Dan Aykroyd is an actor. This is nuts. Guys, we've reached the end because we are the world. I don't like to curse on this show. Cl cover up your kids' ears, but holy. Michael Jackson and Lionel Richie, they knew? I don't know. That's weirdly hopeful. All of us have something like a little bit of reality still tucked away inside of us. We should all work to bring the reality out. Maybe this podcast did that. 
I promise not to sing again. Okay, I'm lying. We are the world. What? It was true all along. Guys, support us at www.first-things.org. Guys, look for a table near you because it's coming. The KP or the Supra in the Georgian tradition is coming. We're blowing it out in 2024. It's happening. Check out our restaurant if you're in town at KP. Check out all the podcasts that we've done. I would love that. Recommend people to it. Love you guys. Peace out. This is Watar, soon to be heavy things done lightly. Click subscribe. Who loves you?